So we've just recently released Penguin 1.14, which includes a number of features to help streamline the zero trust functionality of Penguin. Uh, I'm gonna quickly walk through some of these new additions in this video, just so you can get an idea of how they work and also how they look, because we made a number of UI enhancements along the way. Um, but at a high level, we added port firewalling, so you can restrict access to, to specific resources down to the port level. Uh, ICMP ping now is supported. You can set wildcards in the DNS alias of a private resource, which is useful if you have maybe a traffic instance that you're trying to proxy everything through, um, as well as we now can support sending DNS queries over the tunnel. So if you have a self-hosted DNS server, uh, you can now make that available to your Pangolin clients when they connect. If you're curious, you can read through the full release notes in the link in the description if you wanna go into all the details and see all the changes we made, including things like branding on the resource login pages and maintenance mode. But now heading over to the dashboard, I can click around a bit and show you these in action. So this is Pangolin Cloud. Uh, you can go ahead and make a free account at app.pangolin.net and um, you can use the VPN functionality, which I'll show here, or the reverse proxy functionality on the free tier. This is actually our production account that we use internally for testing the product. So we have a number of sites for different self-hosted services. We have like, you know, our, our self-hosted Bitwarden or um, web analytics or, or even URL shortening. Uh, we have things like our Bastion jump boxes for our dev accounts and our Bastion um, jump box for our production US East uh, VPC in AWS. We also have another organization with more bastions for different um, regions across the country. So moving on to our private resources, uh, you can see we have a number of mostly CIDR resources here for uh, providing access to full subnets and our different VPCs, but uh, you can also create a resource for a specific host. So like this this one resource we have here is for um, actually a, uh, a service I have running in my home lab at the moment, um, going through Pangolin Cloud for testing. I'll go ahead and show these new changes. So the UI has been cleaned up a little bit. There's now a port restriction section at the bottom and an access policy section. So the, the port restrictions um, section is new. This is where you can actually say, oh, you know, Bitwarden is available in this VPC and uh, you know, it's at this 10.20 address and its alias is going to be bitwarden.internal. Uh, but then I can only, you know, access it on a specific port that's exposed. So maybe that's 8888 and there's no UDP traffic because this is just HTTP. And I don't want, you know, I don't want to support ICMP at ping because it's not available. So now I could only access bitwarden.internal colon 8888. Um, when connected over the client, and I could even make this available to specific users in the system. Um, so you know, I could I could say, oh, this is just available for members um, to access that specific resource on that port. I can also allow all access. I can block everything, or I could mix and match specific ports with ranges. Like, you know, maybe I had a Minecraft server running. I could I could do the uh, make this MC internal, and I could allow the whole range for the the typical Minecraft ports which would be something like this. And then now all of those would become available. I'll quickly demonstrate as well this ICMP ping thing. So previously uh, when you were connected with a Pangolin client, so I'll just go ahead and connect now, um, you wouldn't be able to use the ping utility to ping a host on the other end because we were actually blocking ICMP packets. Um, and we had to implement functionality to uh, enable these to go over the tunnel. So now by default, this is enabled um, on new resources. And you can also disable it if you, if you wish. But what this allows us to do is we can then go in and ping a specific host and, and actually get a response back, which is useful for debugging and making sure that you know the tunnel is up if needed. So the next new feature we support is wildcards in the DNS alias for a private resource. So as you saw back in the dashboard, you can set this DNS alias, which will resolve to whatever the destination is you enter here when connected over the tunnel. Um, but the new feature is supporting adding wildcards to any level of that domain, um, or even doing more complex things like adding question marks to match specific characters in the pattern. Um, this is very useful if you, let's say, have a traffic instance running internally on a network and you want to you know, make resources available to users when connected over the client through HTTPS that all go through that reverse proxy with a valid certificate, etc. Um, what you would do is you would say, you know, you can make this like star dot uh, pangolin dot net. Obviously that would be your own domain. Um, and then make this 
destination be the destination of your reverse proxy. You can even restrict the ports to be you know, your typical 443 and 80 ports uh, on TCP and then you know, block UDP because it wouldn't be needed in this example. Um, and then every single request going to maybe it's bitwarden.penguin.net or minecraft.penguin.net would then resolve to this destination, go to the reverse proxy, um, and then be sent via the reverse proxy to wherever it then needs to go from there. Uh, so there's a bunch of different use cases for this. That's just a popular one. Give it a try and let us know uh, what you end up using that for. So the final big feature we added is the ability to send DNS queries to a remote DNS server on one of the sites you're making available through Pangolin. Um, so imagine you have a Pi-hole server running on the site of you know any number of your site, like my home lab. Um, I could create a, a resource here for Pi-hole, make it available at, I don't know, maybe it's 6.4, uh, no alias. And now I could actually take this destination uh, and then put that into the Pangolin client to use as that DNS server. So that way every single query goes over the tunnel, hits that Pi Hole server, uh, gets resolved internally on the client, and then the request then gets sent over the tunnel as usual once it's been resolved. Uh, so this is supported in all of the Pangolin clients, Mac OS, Windows, Pangolin CLI, CLI, as well as Ulm itself. Um, so for example, for me, I have Pangolin already installed on Mac OS. I can go to settings here, preferences, uh, and then I can enable DNS tunnel and then set a custom server. So if this is this example of Pi Hole, I just put in my 192.168.1.64 address, and then I'd be able to send, uh, it would automatically start, you know, using that DNS server as I make requests. You could also set a backup server here if you wanted to. I can make this just a common public server as, a, as an option in case my Pi Hole server wasn't available. So that's a 1.14 update. We're working towards a 1.15 update here shortly, which will take us out of beta and also include mobile apps for iOS and Android. You can give these updates a try at app.pangolin.net for free, or you can self-host Pangolin fully on your own infrastructure if you wish using the Community Edition or Enterprise Edition.